I just wanted to give a quick update on the lane detection uh, and how it's going. So I'm going to start off by showing you what the camera well, what the camera calibration does. So this is not actually in our Ross workspace. This is a separate application. And what this does is it uh, it'll load a list of images, which are supposed to be calibration images that you prepare. And in these images, you have a grid um, that you can either print it off, but in this case, because it's a simulator, I just created a model that had the uh, grid texture on it. And um, you just kind of move it around and it'll uh, calculate all sorts of distortion things for the camera. And I'll show you what the output looks like. Uh, what it's going to do first is it's going to cycle through about 30 different images and um, it's going to first identify the grid where it's at, its orientation, how far away it is, and then it's going to um, just do that for each image and then it's going to run this calibration routine. All right, so that's done. And what I was about to show you now is this is the corrected or undistorted version. So you can see where it like it tucks it in a little bit right here, a little bit right here. Um, and I can cycle through these. There's not a whole lot of difference, but when you're dealing with the projection, especially like in this area up here at the top, um, it kind of, it matters exponentially, if that makes any sense. It matters it's almost negligible at the bottom but it matters a lot up here so even though it doesn't look like it's doing a lot what it allows you to do is use a cheap camera and you can then correct digitally for any kind of distortion that the camera may have um, and right now that's all that the calibrator does um, I haven't actually figured out how to save the camera calibration and then load it back up in this uh, other thing which I'll show you which is the edge detector so right now the edge detector is outputting the distorted or the regular version of the image uh, what it does is it finds is it'll extract the edges and then it'll warp it'll take that image and it'll warp it to the uh, proper scale and perspective for our uh, our map server let's see here we're done with that. So I'm going to show you the actual lane detector. So the first thing I found out was that um, I've created a grid uh, world. And I set the, uh, let me set this real quick. There we go. Um, so on these different settings, um, well, the first thing is uh, you want the grid, if it's a grid and the, uh, in the simulated world, you want it to project to a grid. So, changing the aspect ratio doesn't um, affect whether or not the lines are parallel. Uh, neither does scaling the image. And that just slides the overlay. So the only thing that affects whether or not it gets projected as a grid or whether or not the lines stay parallel and perpendicular is this projection ratio, which is the ratio of this top and the bottom of the keystone. So you'll see right now it's set at 455. But if we move it, the image will become more or less kind of compressed on the bottom. So 
And if you go all the way out to one, it should be the original image. And so what you want to have happen is you want to have all those vertical lines go completely vertical. And that happens around, that's too far. Pretty close. But that's the first thing I should do. Alright, so this is a control panel for the uh, for the computer vision module. Um, so you can adjust the edge detection threshold. And as you see, it'll uh, more more edges come through as you uh, decrease that threshold. right there so basically what you're seeing is um, this is like a calibration stage I created um, where the robot is uh, these uh, tick marks they should mark off one meter which in for right now is uh, gonna be 87 pixels on the main map and so what you see here is uh, the warped version of the image. Uh, this is just the raw edge detection. So this is what it comes through as. And then it will warp it into into this, or it should. There it goes. Um, let's see here. So what you're seeing with these rings that they're not there in the real life. Uh, they're part of the uh, calibration setup that I got. So I don't, um, as far as how the projection has got to be calibrated, um, these tick marks need to line up with one meter over here in Arviz. So these concentric rings are just added on the video feed after the warping and they are uh, at one meter or 87 pixels and so they don't change uh, but you can change the scale of the whole projection and as you can see that these uh, the concentric rings will change because you're just you're increasing and decreasing the size of the whole image But if you notice in Arviz over here, that the size of the rings, as far as like their distance apart, never changes. So the idea is that you adjust it and you line them up. So you want to line up uh, each of those concentric rings with the tick marks. I know this is a pretty sketchy way of uh, mapping the projection, but it works pretty well. And what you can do from there is that you can uh, adjust the aspect ratio, and that's the aspect ratio of this whole square. So this long side to this short side. So, uh, and that'll cause, that'll kind of squish and stretch it. And these tick marks over here are at 45 degrees. So these lines are at 45 degrees. So you wanna, you wanna line those up. So that they're in line at 45 degrees. Bam, spot on. And then you can adjust this, you adjust the scale to get your spacing.
and then you um, and then you can also offset and what this offset does this is just offsetting that overlay it's not doing anything else but uh so it just slides the offset forwards and backwards in the direction of the camera and so by playing with these sliders um, adjusting the scale adjusting the aspect ratio you can uh, what you want to do is line up all these tick marks so that your projection is so that what it sees is, is going to get stamped where it's actually at if that makes any sense Yeah, I just want to show you that these concentric rings are at one meter because these this uh, grid behind there is one meters, one meter squares. But uh, it's a pretty janky way of doing it. But what you do is you adjust it and you get it, get the scale done right. And let's see, let me shut this down. And there's a certain order you got to shut it down, of course. But you, um, you you move those sliders and then you come over here, drag that window over here, and then you uh, change these defaults. And then when you don't want that overlay to be printed, you can just uh, you can just turn it off, turn the debug overlay off. Um, and that's pretty much it for now. Um, Where's it at? Yeah, right here. So right now, I am just taking the direct output from the canning edge detector and warping the perspective. Um, but what I'm going to do once I figure out how to uh, save those camera parameters and load them back up is I'm going to, before I warp the perspective, I'm going to do that undistort right here. And so it'll be find the edges, undistort that image, and then warp that image. And then that'll give us the true, surely, <laughs> it'll give us the true output. Uh, so from this point forwards, all I got to do is write a map server, which will basically use that sub uh, CV grid as a brush and just continuously brush it onto the like main map which is static and doesn't move and so once that's done we should have a testable lane detection system so we'll see how that goes but all right i appreciate y'all for watching peace out